Well, hello again. It's Trudy here from Hot Patterns, our first uh, little YouTube clip of 2013. And we thought we'd do this one not really as a kind of how to put a garment together tutorial because you'll see this one's pretty easy. But I wanted to go through a few details with you on it, uh, namely an exposed zipper or a semi-exposed zipper and how to attach a neckline face when you've got a zipper and a little hem doodah thing. So I'm going to work on this one. This is our new pattern. It's really gorgeous. It's the Deco Vibe Shadow Woven t-shirt and tunic. I'm making the t-shirt version here only just because I'm making the t-shirt, that's it. Um, and obviously I'll, I'll walk you through roughly how the pieces go together, but when I do you'll see that it's ridiculously simple. It's really the important thing is, the details I'm going to show you, that's what takes it from kind of hmm, nice top to ooh lovely, which is what we really want. Um, as always, quick and dirty, no production values of any sort whatsoever, and you will probably hear the pitter-patter of Puppy Emmett trundling around while we're doing this, always looking for something to eat because he's a basset and that's how they roll. So, now I've told you what we're going to do, it's the Deco Vibe Shadow Woven T-shirt and Tunic. Oh, that's a wolf for the um, Now Jeremy's going to come in very, very closely and we're going to go quickly through the pieces for you. So um, I'm pretty sure you can't see my face, but I know you can see my hands, which is the important part. I'm going to quickly go through with you the uh, pattern pieces, just so you recognise the shape of them. Um, this is the uh, front. Here is the centre front uh, fold line. We're going to do a dart through here, because it's got a little semi-dart. And this is your side front panel, so that's fairly easy. Uh, this one is your centre back. I've just laid out one back, because as you can see, we're working on a smallish table here. Uh, centre back here. This goes up into the neckline. Can you see this, Jeremy? Yes. You, you've seen that? Okay, that's your... Back Back neck uh, neckline contrast piece. This is your shoulder contrast piece, and you must put the neckline pieces on before you put the shoulder on. If you try and do it the other way, it's going to go horribly, horribly wrong. We don't want that. So the really important thing that I want to show you with this tutorial is how to put your exposed zipper or your semi-exposed zipper down the centre back. I haven't decided yet I'm going to use this black one, which has got quite chunky teeth, but it is a separating zipper, which we don't want, or this rather vintagey one. When I say vintage, I just mean really, really old. Uh, you can see it's a dollar seventy-five, and they haven't been a dollar seventy-five for some considerable time. So um, I might use a white one for contrast. I might use a black one because it's chunky. Who knows? We'll see. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away and put all this together because um, it, it really is a matter of just jigsawing it together. There's nothing special about this. But then there's three things I want to show you, and you'll see them, and they'll be very, very useful for you. And we're back. So. I've gone away and done all the kind of prelim parts, which is actually the bulk of the garment. And I'll quickly go through with you the pieces I've done and what I've done to them, because when you see it, you're kind of like, oh yeah, this is a jigsaw, isn't it? It really is. Just pieces put together. It's really simple. There's no ruching, no easing, no zhuzhing, nothing of that. Just put it together. So we end up having short sleeves like this, which I know at the moment kind of look like a medieval jester's costume, but trust me, it's all going to work out okay. Got a pair of those. Uh, we do have um, our neckline facings, which at the moment are of no relevance to you whatsoever, but they will be very shortly. Uh, we've got our front. Now, let me show you the front. I think we can see all the front there. We can. Okay, now the front has got two little baby darts in here, which are just darts. They're just darts. Good grief, they're easy to do. Start from the outside, work in, no problem. And this one has got the shoulder uh, piece on as well. And You've no, you may notice, but whenever I'm, do, I'm sewing white and black together, white pieces and black pieces together, and I did this when we did the Deco Vibe patchwork skirt as well, um, I always press the seam allowances into the darker fabric, because then you just don't see them. If I press them into here, you don't see them, it'd be really horrible. So, this is your front that's been prepared. In a few moments, when I'm showing you a couple of other things, I'm going to show you how we deal with this hem issue, this bit here. You may notice, if you're eagle-eyed, if I'm ahead of black, I have left long, 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 long threads on this one. I've hemmed it halfway, and then I've left long threads, and I'm going to show you why. There's a little sneaky trick on this one. Uh, because you need to hem the front, wherever it is, there we are. You need to hem the front before you go ahead and kind of complete it. So, but that's the front done. The front is all done and dusted. And the back is done too. Apart from, of course, our festive um, putting in the zip. But I'm going to use the white one because it looks really cool. Um, and what I've done is I've prepared it and I'm gonna get Jeremy to come in now and we're gonna go up close and I'm gonna show you what you have to do. It's really easy, it gives you a great result. And if you want to do a semi-exposed zipper, which is this is what's gonna be, this is how you do it. All right, so this is our uh, semi-exposed zipper application. And here's what you have to do. And I've kind of done it as far as I can do it without actually putting the zipper in and I'm gonna show you what we've got. So from the bottom, 
I don't think you can see the stitching on this because I stitched it in black on black, sorry about that, had to be done. But you've done your normal 3 8 of an inch seam up to the bottom of your zipper. Now our pattern says 16 inch zipper, you can use 16 inch, you can use a little bit longer, don't go shorter. So it's really up to you. So I've um, done my little 3 8 of an inch there and then from here I have done stay stitching which I've cunningly done in white. Can you see that? Is that showing no. up, Joan? No. Okay, trust me on this. Um, this is five eighths of an inch away from the cut edge. Your seam allowance is three eighths. I've given it another uh, quarter of an inch. And I've done that for a reason. This is my stay stitching. This is my press line. So what I've done is I've pressed it back over here. And, turn to the ta 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 Can you see how there's a notch cut in that? Let me, whoa, 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 hold it down. Hang on, I'm gonna hold it behind my hand. Okay, now this I'm gonna focus a... right on you. Spare me a second, okay. would you? Okay. Okay. There's a notch cut in here, very badly I have to tell you, because this fabric does not behave itself when it doesn't want to. You cut a notch in there, and then you can flip back your um, stay Now you stitching. can see the stay right, stitching. Right, the stay stitching is in white. So you cut a notch in here at the bottom of your stay stitching, at the top of your ordinary seam, and flip it back. And what you end up with is a nice, neat, pressed opening, which I'm pretty sure Jeremy can get because he's pretty cool at these things. You've got a nice opening like this. Now, in theory, the bottom of this should be square. Some fabrics, mentioning no names, linen, don't like to behave themselves like that, but that's okay. Um, the important thing is, is that now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to pin this in behind the opening, and the key is to make sure that you center it up. You do not want a wonky zipper. That would look ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna come even closer. Oh, yes, okay, do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'm now going to pin this and then I'm going to hold it up and Jeremy can get you a really nice shot of how it's going to look before it gets sewn. So now I've pinned in my zipper and I'm just going to quickly show you this. Right, just bear me one second while I Should zoom into that, would you? Hold it, hold it up further, please. Okay. That's it. Now the important thing with this, because you've got contrast, neckband and body, is that these lines here match perfectly. If you need to use scotch tape or something to stick the zipper in place, go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, top stitch my zipper into place. And you see I've got like a little uh, kind of extra bit of the zipper tape showing. I want that because it's quite, a, it's quite a narrow zipper. So once I've put the zipper in, I'm going to attach it at the shoulders and then we're going to come back and we're going to see the next magic bit, which is putting on the neckline facing and joining it to the, um, the zipper tape at the back to give you a really clean finish on the inside of the neckline. So now I've uh, gone away and done what I said I was going to do. I've put the zipper in and I've uh, attached the back to the front. So I'm just going to hold this up now and show you. That is what we get. And uh, can I just Ooh. point out something? I oh, know it's pretty, isn't it? Mm. Can I just point out something, which is um, I'm actually picky enough to change thread colours. So when I'm going along here, I did this bit in black and I did that bit in white because <laughs> that's really how picky I am. While I had black in the machine, I also did uh, my centre back hem as well. My centre front hem's already done. And I did the same thing on my sleeves as well. I hemmed the black parts of the sleeves as well, just let, left these open because that's the last time I'm gonna use black thread on this one. Everything else is gonna be done in white um, just because that's my contrast color. That's how it's gonna be finished off. All right, so now we've got the uh, back zipper in and it looks looking pretty gorgeous. Just show you again. Ooh, lovely, pretty, pretty. Uh, now we're gonna put the back neck, uh, or sorry, the whole neck facing on. And the whole point of the neckline facing on this one with a zipper is we want to get a really nice clean finish inside here. We want all this to be kind of tucked away and hidden away. So I'm gonna pin it up for you and show you how you pin it up. Now bear in mind, this is one of these things, uh, today, I don't know what is wrong with my head, but uh, today I, it's gonna be 15 attempts to actually work out how to do it. And I've done this hundreds of times. It's like, it's like breathing. But sometimes you just get one of those days. This is one of those days for me. Probably not the best day for filming a tutorial, but what the hey? All right, so uh, I'm gonna get Jeremy to zoom in. I'm gonna pin it for you. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and I'm gonna tell you why I'm doing it. Alrighty, so there's my neck facing, and you can see, you can probably see, I haven't interfaced this at all, and there is a reason for this, uh, apart from, <laughs> please don't say sheer idleness, it's really not. Um, I want the whole thing to be very slouchy and, and relaxed, and if I'm going to interface this linen, it goes very crispy, even if I use a very lightweight interfacing, so I had to make the executive design decision to not interface it, so that's what I did. Now, here is what I'm wanting to do. I am wanting to match 
this seam, the shoulder seam of the facing, up with this notch, which I think you can see on there. Can you see that? Well, I'm just coming a little bit more. I do. Okay, we yes. can see. That is your kind of shoulder notch there, that's the centre of your shoulder. So that's going to match up to here, and I suggest you do that now because it's going to make life a little easier, especially if you're having a bit of a brain fog like me today. I'm telling you, I'm just so stupid. Right. This is the centre back seam of your uh, back neck facing, and in the instructions I've said to you to trim off, I think it's three eighths of an inch, that's what you're going to do. And you're going to trim it off because you're going to be attaching it to this. This is your um, centre back seam. You're going to be attaching it here because you want uh, to clean that off. Now I haven't taken this off on the pattern for a very simple reason. Not everyone wants to do a centre back exposed zipper, or you might want to not do it on every single version of these. You might want to put a side seam zipper in, in which case you'll need the facing to be the correct size. So I've left it that and you can trim it off. So we are now going to go wild and just trim off on both sides um, about three eighths of an inch. You can go a little bit less, you can do a quarter of an inch if you're getting scared or if you're being an idiot like me today, which happens a lot, let me tell you. So three eighths of an inch, snippity snip. Okay, got it. All right, here is our zipper undone, obviously. Um, you need to understand the zipper teeth are now our centre back, okay? Not this, this is our centre back. So here's what we're going to do, we're going to flip it over like this, so that's out like that, and we are going to attach this along here. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you how it flips out because you've got to obviously do the neckline one before you do this. Now what's going to happen when we've done this is that this seam is going to be more like here. Does that make sense? Let me just do it and show you. All right, now here is what I've got. I've done these little short seams here where I've attached the uh, back of the back neck facing onto the seam allowance and the zipper tape in here. This is what you get like that. All looks very nice and this will all be tucked away in here, all very lovely. That's what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, and the final thing you have to do to achieve that is this. You need to treating the zipper as the centre back, you need to basically do that and flatten out your seam allowance like this. I can feel there are the zipper teeth right up against that fold, okay? Um, you can't see it, but you can feel it. You need to flatten that like that and then you need to sew all the way around here. So, obviously you can go and um, press this open if you wish, and you probably should right now. Um, I'm also going to trim back this seam allowance, there's your seam. Okay, I'm going to trim that back a little bit more and I'm going to sew it all the way around and then I'll notch here and when I flipped it out you'll look at it and go ooh pretty very very neat because it is that's how you do it so seam make sure you fold it so that your zipper teeth you can feel them right there because that's your new center back and that's where it needs to be and then all the way around here clip it at the corners turn it out all right this is it all pinned up before I go off and sew it um, and as I said to you before on both of these the zipper teeth here, you can feel it just along the fold line there. Um, I have trimmed back this seam allowance, the seam allowance that goes towards the zipper teeth here because it's going to be a bit bulky otherwise. Um, and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a line of stitching all the way around here. Obviously I'm going to clip these corners and I'm probably going to trim it right back here so I can get a good turn and then I will turn it out and I will edge stitch underneath and then you'll see that it looks gorgeous and it's a nice neat finish. Alrighty, I thought I'd show you this before I turn it because I've done two things that are useful for you to know. One is I have clipped the corners here, obviously, because I'm going to turn it. And the other one is I have trimmed it right back, the seam allowance right back to, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say an eighth. I'm going to say an eighth and a bit, which is not a very technical measurement. And I do that because, honestly, I can't bear those little kind of notchy things that leave hundreds of triangles everywhere. It drives me crazy. So, and that's the dog shaking himself. That's the Basset Hound having a good old shake, bless him. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly just turn this out. It hasn't been kind of pressed and neatened, and I'm going to be uh, understitching all the way around here. But this is the magic part. You ready? That's the um, outside of the garment. This is the wrong side. So I'm just going to push it out here, and obviously I'll do this neater when I actually get around to pressing it. But that... Hang on a second, I need to just... 
Yeah, we did. Okay, that is what you get. And on the inside, more importantly, ooh, that's what you get, all nice and clean and neat. Obviously, we've got black stitching from the zipper. We don't care about that. I'm going to go now and I'm going to press it, and then I'm going to do my um, understitching around here and press it again. And then we are ready to really complete it. And the other thing to tell you is that when I've done that and I flip the facing out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to basically uh, attach it on here, onto the uh, armhole, because then I can treat the whole thing as one. The face is not going to flip around, and it's going to get sealed in when I put the sleeves on. Um. So here we are, pretty much on the home straight now. Um, I think you can see I've actually put the sleeves in, put them in on the flat. I'm just going to quickly flip this over, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in here. Remember I said she was going to put the facing down, the size, the size of the facing? Uh, these have gone into the um, overarm seam, and that's because I don't like it. You know when you have a facing that kind of flops up, drives me incandescent with rage, I can't tell you. So um, by doing this, it allows it to, to lay much flatter. Now what I found with these facings is, they kind of want to move around a little bit, let them go, let them lay flat where they want to lay. This isn't properly lined up centrally over that um, white strip here. doesn't matter, it needs to lay nice and flat. It wants to do that, let it do what it wants to do. It's a bit like, you know, if you have really, really curly hair and you spend days and days straightening it straight, it's never going to say that. As soon as you walk out into the humidity, bang, bang, it's going to go right back, ask me how I know. Um, so it's the same with the face saying, don't make it do something it doesn't want to do. So let it lay flat and it's all good. And then you lay it in, um, you put your sleeve in on the flat like this, and of course it's very important to match these up. Now when I was pinning these, <laughs> I did the first one without pinning it properly, and of course it was an absolute disaster. So the second one I'm like, alright, do it properly, you stupid woman. So I did. Uh, what you do is you pin it together, obviously um, at your at the edge here and go through and just kind of check that it's all done and then pin it again further down and I did it by rolling it back here to check that it's all matching up and so you pin it in the seam allowance, outside the seam allowance and so right through like that and you will get a much much better result. You can hear pitter pattering I know, it's it's. You empty. can also get the camera being slightly moved because <laughs> the dog is, is inside the tripod. The dog has decided that, that he's come to see daddy right now and because he loves daddy and also daddy is the, the bringer of treats mm. and our dog is a lovely dog but my god he's greedy so uh, he lives to eat. Uh, but then he's a basset, what can I tell you? Okay, so I'm just going to hold this up for you very, very briefly. And you can see, and I know Jeremy's always amazed when we get to this stage, and like, how did that happen? You've gone, duh, 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 and it's, yes, yes, it is. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to join the front to the backs down here, uh, down at the bottom. And then my last little sneaky thing I'm going to show you, don't forget, when we did this, um, the front of this, we only hemmed it from here to here, and then we left a really long, or really long, threads. I'm going to show you why I left a really long thread. So um, it's just a really good way of getting your hem without any stop and start on it. And I know it's a bit finicky, but that's the kind of girl I am. So that's it. I'm going to put the sides together, press it open, I'll show you the hem bit, and we are done. Uh -oh. Okay, so now I've got to the stage where it's all looking pretty darn gorgeous. Quick show there. Ooh, lovely. Um, and I want to show you the final little tricky thing, which is finishing off the hem. Uh, this is the hem for the side seam panels. And of course, we did a little bit of it uh, before joining the side front to the center front, because you have to, you kind of have to, there's no real way of getting around it. Um, and now I'm going to show you the sneaky, tricky way of getting a nice finish on this. And for that, I'm going to get Jeremy to come around and stand behind me so you can see down here. Okay, here is a, a sneaky method of getting your um, hem which you can see here, has been half done from here up to here, and then I've left a long, 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 long thread through here. And what I want to do is be able to complete the hem in one fell swoop. So here's what I'm going to do. I've unthreaded this, and I'm going to attempt, while putting my reading glasses on, because of course middle age sucks, a big fat hairy toe, and it means that I have to now wear reading glasses to thread a needle, which is always excellent. However, first time lucky, jolly good. Right, pull that through. And then if you've got an overlock or a serger, whatever you want to call it, you'll be familiar with this. You're going to tie these together. Uh, it's called tying it on. Of course, in England, that means something quite different. It means you're getting wildly, wildly drunk, which, believe me, after the idiot day I'm having is the last thing I need to be doing. Okay, so I've got a double knot here. And all I'm going to do now is pull this thread. This is the thread that's attached to the spool of thread, and this is the thread here that's attached to the garment. I'm going to pull this back up. So as soon as my garment gets under the needle, that's when I should stop doing that. So I'm pulling that up, hoping that I don't tangle everything, which of course I'm liable to do today. Okay. Now, in a very sneaky fashion, 
I should pull it around here. Are you impressed? Jeremy, are you impressed? Right. You should be impressed. You didn't think that was going to happen, did you? <laughs> okay, you, know, you put your foot down and you can just continue as though you were never away from doing the hem. Let me quickly do that and you will see so what I mean. There we have it. Rather lovely little number. I think you can all agree. This is the uh, Deco Vibe shadow woven t-shirt and tunic pattern this of course is the t-shirt version you get a very sporty look from it but I mean, it is quite a sporty thing the reason i've used a very dressy fabric or not dressy a, a kind of a less relaxed less casual fabric is i wanted a kind of relaxed look but i didn't want it to be kind of floppy like t-shirty and sort of pull on over the head so it's a kind of floppy wash linen and before um, i leave you i will simply say that you have a lot of fabric choices with this lots you can mix obviously solids and solids you can mix solids and print uh, you can mix prints that's really up to you when it comes to the type of fabrics you want you really want something that's got well, I say a little bit of kind of give to it, a little bit of drape to it. The truth is you can use a lot of fabrics here. The thing I would avoid is something very heavy and very stiff. Um, certainly I wouldn't do this in something like a faux suede or a denim. I wouldn't do it in denim. I'd do it in chambray though, that's for sure. Although the truth is if you had a wash denim and it was nice and, and soft, you might get away with it. So really think about things like chambray, uh, not chambray, chambray and uh, kind of wash linen and floppy things, but also think about things that are a little bit firmer. But you can do all sorts of things with this. Mix your prints, mix your solids. Uh, prints and solids, whatever you like, it works really, really well. And it's a super cool kind of weekend top, uh, also to wear over a pencil skirt, wear over a, a pair of pants. Really versatile, very, very lovely, and you will look fabulous in it.